faith. Great is thy faithfulness. Yes, Lord. Lord unto me. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve this morning. We are going to the book of James, I mean, John, chapter 12 again. And, uh, uh, it's exciting about who God is and what God is doing. We give God praise and thanksgiving. He's an awesome God. Amen. He is an awesome God. I'm trying to get my camera to do what I'm asking it to do. There it is. Amen. That's it. That's it right there. Amen. Praise your Lord. Praise your Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. We got to have the right aesthetics in this video thing, you know. Supposed to call you up and tell you. Amen. John chapter 12. <sighs> Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume, but Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. Our subject this morning, when our worship is real. When our worship is real. Let us pray, Father, I decrease that the Holy Spirit might increase Speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind. Father, your word is anointed, it shall not return to your void, but it shall accomplish everything that you send it out to do. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. It is in Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people say amen and amen. A study was done in Britain last year to determine how much food the British public throws away into their trash bins every day. Not food that has been partially consumed, but food that is completely untouched. The study revealed that each day people were throwing away, among other things, 4.4 million apples, 1.6 million bananas, 1.2 million sausages, 660,000 eggs, 440,000 ready meals, 220,000 loaves of bread, and 5,500 chicken. All this adds up to 6.7 million tons of wasted food a year which is worth about 10 billion pounds. 
That's not all. The study also revealed that it costs local authorities one billion pounds a year to dispose of all that wasted food. These results were shocking to say the least, especially when millions of people in the world do not have enough food to eat. I do not know what the results would be if the same study were done in America, but I suspect that we may not be too far behind Britain because of the wasteful consumerist mindset that many Americans have today. Perhaps I should ask, what would you consider to be a waste? Spending $700 to stay at the Ritz Carlton for one night? or spending $1,000 for a ticket to watch the NCAA playoffs between Duke and Carolina, maybe spending $3,500 on a new Fendi, or how about spending $6,000 on a bottle of top grade perfume and using it all up at one go? How many of us would consider that to be a waste? Many probably would without the least hesitation. Our text today is about a woman who did just that, relatively speaking, but it was not a waste. In today's economics, the money Mary spent on this nard or spack nard or favorite fragrant perfume would equal about $40,000 which is the median annual income for a family in America. We have at least four accounts of a woman who anointed Jesus's feet with oil, but only in John do we have Jesus at the home of his dearest friends. Our text takes us to the final days before crucifixion. We are at the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus in Bethany. From these three people, we get three aspects of who we are in Jesus and what worship means to us. You get to decide which one you are. Let's go down the list. Martha, servant, no problem this time, not bothered by Mary, sitting this time, expression of love to Jesus, faithful in service. Verse two of John's gospel simply stipulates Martha serves. Not as Luke did. Luke said that Martha got jealous because Mary was seated, sitting at the feet of Jesus. But we come in John, John insists that serving is who she is. That's what she does. Nothing wrong with serving. How many of you are servants? How many of you enjoy serving others? How many of you are willing to volunteer to, to, to do something for someone else? And you do it because that's the way God made you. That's your bent. You're always looking for a way to serve, to be useful, to be helpful. John says there's nothing wrong with Martha. And so if you are a servant, in the house of the Lord, amen, hallelujah. You have company for David said, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness for a season. Let's keep moving. What about Lazarus? Lazarus is a witness. People gathered from miles around to see Jesus and Lazarus witness of miracle work and power, that miracle work and power of God. And he witnesses without saying a word. <laughs> All Lazarus has to do is show up and his testimony speaks for him that he once was dead, but now he's alive. Lord have mercy. His life, his life was a witness because of what Jesus had done, changed him dead now alive lost now found blind now see i'm so glad lazarus would testify i'm so glad 
Jesus changed my life. He never spoke about it. He lived it. He was about it, about it. You didn't have to worry about who Lazarus was, for Lazarus was a witness. Folk came to Bethany, to Mary and Martha and Lazarus' house just to look at him, just to behold this man who once was dead and is now alive. Lord have mercy. You remember the song, I Am a Living Testimony? I could have been dead and gone. But God let me live on. That's Lazarus. He is a witness. Are you a witness of the life changing, life transform, transforming power of Jesus Christ? Well, let's move on. Find yourself in the scripture. The next one is Mary. Yes, then there's Mary doing what Mary does. And you know Mary is a worshiper. She doesn't care about all that other stuff. She just wants to worship Jesus because for Mary, worship is the best response she can give to what God has done for her in her life. Mary just wants to worship, to be at the feet of Jesus, telling Jesus how great he is, how good he is, how much she loves him. Mary is expressing by this oil an uh, act of her love and devotion of Jesus Christ. And many church folks stumble on this subject of worship. We often hear people ask, what is worship? What does it mean to worship God? Well, if you got to ask, <laughs> You might not be worshiping. Ask anyone you meet at Walmart when you go there today. If you go there, ask them, ask them, ask them, what is worship? Or not what is worship, but how is worship? Because they'll be still dressed in their Sunday best. Ask them, how is worship today? And you'll get all kind of responses like, amazing. We had a great time in church today. Or someone might say, it was a little flat today. You know, uh, it didn't move me today. It, you know, we, we, we forget the fact that worship is not about moving us. <laughs> worship is about touching God and moving God because God inhabits the praises of his people. So we don't come to church to be stirred, to be moved for our own benefit, we come to church to move God's heart that it might lean in our direction. <laughs> that it might lean in our direction so that it will meet every one of our needs. That's just a, a benefit of worship. When you can move God, you've done something. Your worship is real when it touches the heart of God. And you're not, you're not waiting on somebody to perform. Reverend man, you sang good today. We thank God for you that guide me, oh, thy great Jehovah, still in my spirit. Great is thy faithfulness, got me motivated. But we don't come to hear good music or even to hear good preaching. We come to connect with God. We want to be in an environment where we are safe, where we are secure, where we can touch God's heart because we've had a rough week. For some, it's a good week, but it's still a rough week in terms of what we could have when God enters into the picture. And so we come to connect with God because we want to know that we're still pleasing God. <laughs> Connection, yes, yes. When we say flat, or amazing, it's about time we check ourselves because something might not be connected. The light bulb may work, but the electricity may be out. And when you flip the switch, you don't see any light. Yeah. When you can't touch God's heart, it means that your heart is on other things. And you got to do something about that. Mary, Mary says she has the heart 
of a worshiper. And one thing about a worshiper, there is nothing that they have that they will not render to God. Listen now to the text. Mary is a worshiper. We're talking about our worship is for real. Jesus is in Bethany with Mary, Martha, Lazarus, a family of which we are familiar. At least many of us are familiar with this story. A few weeks or days prior to this text, John sends an, what we call it, Instagram about Jesus taking a long time to visit his this family even after they had sent him an emergency 911 call about Lazarus' sickness. Luke sends it on Facebook. Jesus, get to Bethany. Your friend, the one you love, is not well. Jesus keeps doing what he's doing. And of course, Jesus, as only he could, showed up and showed out as he went to Lazarus' grave and told Lazarus with his stinking self to get up, that it wasn't his time yet. And, and that's what Lazarus did. Lazarus got up, he was bound, and Jesus said, loose him and let him go. Now, I had to put that in here because, you see, sometimes we're bound. Sometimes we're dead. Sometimes our spirit is flat. Sometimes the storms of life have, have gripped us. And with all that we did to try to rebound, we just couldn't reconnect. And it will take Jesus to come and reconnect us with God. That's why we worship, to maintain that connection. So then... We see that Lazarus came forth and he was the talk of the whole town. Jesus had a special bond with this family. It was not unusual for Jesus to come visit and stay with them whenever he went to Jerusalem. In this instance, he did no less. Let's talk about not only the worship, in terms of being able to connect with God. But it's also when you worship, are you acting like God? Are you an imitator of God? Mary, Mary is seated at the feet of Jesus where she always is. But Mary does something that the disciples, his homeboys, the ones taking him for granted, did not do. Sometimes you can be in the presence of greatness and take it for granted. You don't mean no harm, but, but you've been knowing them all your life. You grew up with them. Nothing special, you know, they're from around the way. So you don't add any value to them, although they're great people. And that's what the disciples did. But this Mary, this Mary, this Mary had some spike nard. And she broke the bottle and she anointed Jesus' feet and his head. The perfume was all over the house. And guess what? When you are a worshiper, somebody's going to criticize your worship. They're going to tell you, you don't take all that. Why, why'd you do that? You don't have to do that. That's what the disciples whose spokesperson was Judas, said about her giving Jesus all that oil that they knew was expensive, but Judas being the treasurer, he wanted to get his hands on the money. And so Judas spoke up and said, that's a waste. You should have never wasted that oil on Jesus. You should have sold that oil and we could have blessed the poor. Well, there's always a good purpose for any wealth. But Mary was not uh, naive about what she was doing. She was giving Jesus what was valuable because she valued Jesus. She saw Jesus in that hour 
as being a person who needed to know that he was loved, that he was cared about, that someone appreciated what he was about to do on the cross. Jesus said, leave her alone. She only did this because she knows in a few days, I'm gonna give my life a ransom for the world. And she came to anoint me because when I give my life, there will be no time for the rituals where people will take me down and put me in that burial ground and anoint my body with all of the oils that are supposed to preserve me and keep me in the grave. She came today because when they take me down, they're going to bury me right away and they're going to seal the tomb and I will not go through the customary burial rite. Women are some people with foresight and insight. They're like what people said of the tribe of Benjamin. They knew what time it was and what should be done. That's why women are so valuable. That's why God regards them so highly because when they're connected to God, they have insight. They have ideas. They have things that they just know. You can't find it in a book. You can't find it on a menu. They just know how to fix a meal you've never eaten before. They just put stuff together by, by what comes to their mind. And when you eat it, it's so tasty. And now you have restaurants who have taken those types of things and are making millions out of them, but it came from the connection of a woman to her God. Lord have mercy, I better quit here. But now you think about it, it, it was $40,000. And, uh, and, and, and Judas said it was a waste. And Jesus said, you're going to always have time for other folk you want to bless. But I'm not promised to be here that long. And that's the way we ought to treat each other as brothers and sisters. We're not going to be here that long. I was reminded again that, that Brother Carl Akers passed. Just this morning, I was sitting in the sanctuary looking right there where he normally sits. And I saw him in the spirit. And I was like, Brother Akers is gone. This COVID has just, we don't know what's going to happen after COVID. We don't know who's going to be left standing. But sometimes these things just cross your mind. That there are so many people that are not going to be seated in these seats when this pandemic is over. Or in our families. My brother is gone. We still trying to figure that out. But the pandemic is indiscriminate. And so then we should treat each other as if we're not going to be here that long. We should take each other for granted. We should love one another to the fullest, bless one another while we can, do what we can for one another, not because somebody needs it, but because we value that individual. And we want to show some some sign when we lift our hands and speak in tongues and pray hard and then treat people poorly. Our worship is not real. It's difficult to treat people poorly all the time. Everybody rubs you wrong every now and then. But it can't be every day, every week, you just you just treat folk nasty. You are a believer in Jesus Christ who said, love your enemies. Pray for them that despitefully use you. Bless them, not curse them. Wow. Our worship is for real. It's not what you see, it's what you get. It's every day in every way my life, our life gets better and better. Just think about how many church folk have driven away from church because our worship wasn't real. Because people, they say, can spot a fake. But what about if you're not a fake? They just didn't feel your love, your acceptance, your warmth when they came through the door. What if all the rituals were done perfectly right down to the last 
benediction, but it was cold. There was no spirit in the atmosphere. No one felt their heart strangely warm by a connection with God. And then you think about it, how much money have you spent purchasing things for yourself and didn't think twice about it? But the moment a preacher, a steward, a trustee, uh, a missionary, a layman said, we need this for the church, the first words you thought of was, I don't have it. All those other times you would say, let me work on it. I'm going to save it up. I'm going to get it. I'm going to do the best I can. But when it came to the church, your immediate response was, that's too much. I can't do that. And the Bible says death and life are in the power of what? The tongue. So if you say it, then that's what you're going to have. Nothing. If you say you can't do it, then that's what you're going to do. But the Bible says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So if we have a, if we have a mind to do, we can get a word from God that will show us how to do. And we've accomplished so much in this church with so little, but it's been because of those who said, I'll do what I can. I'll do what the God allows me to do. I have a heart for it. I have a desire for it. I don't see it now, but I'm praying that God will bless me so that I can bless the church. Most church campaigns are done during uh, income tax time or Christmas when folks are naturally feeling themselves because they got a little extra money or because they want to give. It's Christmas, so we're supposed to give. But what about the rough months when it's cold, when it's winter, when bills are high? What are we, what are we saying? What are we thinking about worship? Because for worship, we understand in order to worship, in order for your worship to be real, you have to be a worshiper in praise, you have to be a worshiper in witness, and you have to be a worshiper in serving, and you have to be a worshiper in giving. Because all of those components makes up for a true worshiper of Jesus Christ. So as I close this morning and we take communion, I want you to think about, and I'm saying it, I'm prophesying it as a church. Our worship is for real. It has been proven over and over and over again that even when we did not want or could not do, we came through. Because when two or three are gathered together, touching and agreeing on anything, it's possible. All things are possible to them that believe. And we at Lewis Temple believe what God said. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Knock, and the door shall be opened. Seek, and you will find. If we knock, if we seek, if we ask, we do so in expectation that God will deliver. We become like Lazarus. Child, how did you do all that in a year? I'm a testimony of what God can do if you just open up to him and allow him to use you, allow him to show you God wants to be put to the test. I got to quit this. God wants, you see, see, the Bible says that God goes to and fro, seeking whom he may show himself strong to. I want to be one of them that he shows himself strong to. So I know that if I am a true worshiper, I will be connected to God in such a way that God will knock my socks off, that he will do exceedingly abundantly above anything I could ever ask or think. And I am a testimony. I've seen his hand at work over, how do you say that, over there and over there again. I've seen God be a strong deliverer. I've seen God 
hold my heart in his hand when it was broken. I've seen God turn deaf situations around. I've seen God make way out of nowhere. I've walked with God through the heat of the day. I know what God can do. All you have to do is be a worshiper. When your worship is for real, you will experience the grace of God as never before. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for creating worship as our connection to you. We thank you that here at Lewis Temple, our worship is for real. You have preserved us down through the years. You have kept us going. You have met our needs. You've done it in so many different and varying ways. And we wanna say thank you. Great is thy faithfulness. You've been faithful to us and we love you and worship you. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. We're going to move into communion so that I can be out in good time. Emmanuel will assist me. You should have your communion elements there. You may begin to prepare them. I feel that message moving to another level in my spirit. Amen. Amen. So something that floats, something afoot. Amen. I better get my arm together. Mm. Uh, we'll talk about is the recording stopped though? I don't want 